All right, welcome in. It is the Benny versus the Penny emergency Zoom broadcast. We have been united as one here via Zoom because we are honoring social distancing, and we are going to take a look. The schedule came out this week, so we have decided to regale you with amazing factoids about the NFL schedule because I'm jonesing. I don't know about you. I'm jonesing to gamble. I have not been able to place a bet in many, many months, so we will take a look at the odds and all this. And uh, as always, you can see him right there. For better or worse, on Benny versus the Penny, the man affectionately known as Gagon, David Gascon, right over there. I see you dressed up, Gascon. Very nice. Good outfit on there. It's uh, it's all black and representing the United States. Although I can't represent the penny accurately. I don't have... I don't have a coin, Ben. I don't have a penny yeah. anywhere. I don't have a well, dime. I don't have a quarter. I got an old on. passport. Does that count? I got an old hold passport. On. You know, I'm in my uh, I'm in my radio studio, so I have I have some coins over here. I have a chain. Oh, hold on! Look at that. We got the penny. The problem is you're supposed to flip the penny. See that? That's, That's an true. actual penny. Does, See does that it, right there? Right does there. It, Boom. Look at that. <laughs> Covering my face. I covered my face with the penny. It's like a magic trick. I'm like Penn and Teller. Look at that. Boom. Ooh. Does it count that I found an old school General Lee? The old school Dukes. Oh, that is, that is pretty – that did, did the wheels still go on that, though? That's the wheels the still go, yes. It still, uh, still drives. The, the, so, the, yes. the wheels go around. around. I, got a, I got a bunch of other – I got to find uh, – hold on a sec. Oh, this is pretty cool here. I don't know if – I've never shown this on camera. My favorite, my favorite radio show of all time. The reason I got into radio was the Jim Healy radio show, right? Oh, and I remember so a, Jim Healy. So a listener, this is probably 20 years ago, a listener found this and sent it to me, and I've kept it in my office because it, it has all of Jim Healy's catchphrases. Check this out. Let's see if you can, I'm going to show you right there. See if oh, that's good. That. Check that out right there. Now cut now, that out. <laughs> right there look at that huh yeah it's got all that this is an ashtray i don't even smoke and I've, yeah. I've had an ashtray in my office all these years with all this other crap if you could only see the other side of what i'm looking at right now it's uh it's like cowboy's house cowboy and winter's house there it's just it's a hoarder's paradise so you're the jim healy ashtray now do you have the ben maller tom looney book of sports cliches Oh, yes. Well, sportscliche.com. You don't even need a book. You got the sports cliche. Take it one segment at a time. That's a, We've updated the cliches for radio. So you got to take it one segment at a time. Yeah. You, know, you got to bring your A game, right? That's That crosses over. That's universal. That's uh, What do they say in the clothing business when it, it's for men and women? Unisexual or something? Oh, like yeah. That? What they, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uni, unisex. So yeah. it works for everything. So, uh, yeah. So I, my goal is to work as many cliches in as, as I can here for Benny versus the Penny. That's the, that's the dream. Yeah, well, we will uh, we'll, we'll press on, as you would say. Uh, we both bar- brought our hard hats, and uh, we've rolled up our sleeves. Yeah. So, yeah, we uh, really and – and I dressed up too, actually, by the way. And I want you to know, Gascon, we are doing this on my day off. So, technically, this is not a day off. I mean, so just for what, what it's – Well, technically, when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life, right, Ben? Yeah. Well, tell my wife that, Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I would agree with you. I don't know if the wife would agree with you, though. That's the problem. So. Well, my, yeah. my, my apologies for summoning you on a day off. So it's, yeah. it's all good. But you, you were ecstatic a few hours ago uh, when the 2020 uh, schedule was released for the National Football League. So it's a primetime affair with your Kansas City yeah. Chiefs as you, you closed out 2019 in style. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it, it was a good year last year. It got off to a great start betting on the NFL, and uh, as typically happens, you know, is that, that midpoint, I don't know, it was week five, week six, week seven, where things change over, the injuries start piling up, and then it, it really becomes more challenging. I, I really feel pretty – and this year is going to be different because of what's going on with the coronavirus and all that, but, uh, you know, typically the first four or five weeks of the NFL season, I've done pretty good most years because you got a good grasp on everything. Injuries don't take over yet. And, uh, and all that. So after that, you, you, you really got to dig in because the, you're speculating more. It's more like a sweepstakes situation betting on the NFL after the first five or six weeks of this year. And, and then late in the year, that's where the nightmare is late in the season because, uh, as you know, once uh, teams start clinching playoff spots and then they don't really worry about playing their starters all that much, and then it's, uh, 
it's, you're like the Radio City Rockettes there, trying you know, kicking your leg in the air, trying to figure out what's going on. Now, I went back and I, I had to go look at the or listen to the archive of some of the things that you did. So the first four or five weeks, you were you were batting. You'd be in the Hall of Fame. You were batting well over uh, 600. Um, yeah, yeah, that was week, great. So, so only week don't, two don't was bring the only up, week. Don't bring up the rest. Just stop. Put the stop sign up right there. But and, well, uh, see, here's the thing. You would have had better weeks. The only two teams that you really fell in love with that were bad teams were the bad teams: Cincinnati and the Miami Dolphins. But you, yeah. after that, you got away from them. And well, well, there was a point. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't mind betting on bad teams uh, because you can make a lot of money betting on bad teams as long as they're trying. The yeah. key part of that sentence is trying. And it was painfully obvious that for chunks of time, Cincinnati couldn't figure it out. I actually think the Dolphins were trying. They just sucked. And it took them a while to get their sea legs underneath them. But, yeah, I mean, that it's the hope and the reality. And I think a lot of these teams – See, if you bet on the good teams, you've got you've got to worry about the obviously the point spread, and and you're you're dealing with a favorite. I I would much rather find a way. I try to talk myself into finding a way to bet the underdog if everything's kind of equal, because you got more ways to win. Obviously, if you, especially if it's a big underdog. That's just been my philosophy over the years, looking at the games. Because if you, you bet up favorites, it just it seems like public perception you should win all the time, but favorites do not win and cover. Very rare. There's few exceptions, like Belichick and the Patriots over the last 20 years has won. But for the most part, you know, teams are back and forth within a couple of points of the point spread. They, the guys that put the point spreads together, the bookmakers, are insanely good at this now. And I think the best part for, for this season for you is if there are no fans in attendance, you're not going to have to worry about being denied credentials. So you can watch all of these games every <laughs> Sunday, no matter what. Yeah. I don't, I don't have to worry about the Seahawks PR department screwing me over or the Rams PR department screwing me over. Uh, I'm good. I'll just watch at home. And, and, and the other thing, which is I was thinking about is I was talking to a friend of mine, like how do you, from a bookmaking standpoint, I know that the lines are out in all these games, but traditionally yeah. you factor in home field advantage. You factor in crowd noise. Uh, you still have the elements, I assume, if they're going to play these games, you know, West Coast teams going to the East Coast, you'll have that time thing as well where your body clock is on a different time than the, the time zone you're in. So, I mean, that's obviously a part of it, but the, the crowd factor was also an element, and you're not going to have that. And so it's going to be very odd watching, for example, like I, I like the Rams, and uh, don't tell anybody because I think they're going to stink even though they're on prime time. A bunch but the Rams are supposedly going to open up the new stadium against the Cowboys and yeah. it is going to be barren I mean I you're talking about an uninhabited stadium that's not the kind of gala debut she should go back to the Coliseum <laughs> and play or go back to St. Louis they might go back to St. Louis I don't think they want them back there but uh yeah, yeah it's going to be very lifeless and so that you got to factor that in because some guys there's like two types of players there's a the type of player that feeds off the crowd Either way, that they, they gets excited, wants the crowd to cheer for them, or wants to, to feed off the booze, there's very few players that don't have any reaction to the crowd. So yeah. it, it, it's going to be interesting when, uh, when Joe Blow's not in the crowd to see how these guys react. See, that's the one interesting thing. You mentioned the Rams. I think that actually might work out to their benefit because Dallas comes to town, and if it's anything <laughs> like the Chargers, what they've been the last couple of years, it's always been a road team advantage when they come into Los Angeles. So for the Rams, that's one thing. And remember the Vegas Golden Knights two years ago when they went to the Stanley Cup final? Oh, yeah. There was, yeah, always, yeah, that, right. there was always that Vegas flu that that's people right. talked about. Well, so that, well, that could yeah. be an instance against the Raiders this year. That's, that's true. Well, that could, help, well, that could help the Raiders, right? Because you yeah. guys go to Vegas and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You got to factor that in. And uh, although that Vegas flu kind of – dissipated i guess they found a vaccine for the vegas flu there it was vodka and, uh, courtesy of uh, alexander ovechkin those, those harmful pathogens and all <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly uh so yeah i mean you, you look at that you know the problem is the nfl guys don't have a lot of time to go out and commit debauchery like the nba players and baseball players baseball players uh i know firsthand have the most time to run amok <laughs> and uh, live live the full life and all that. So uh, you, you got that going on. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be virgin territory this year in the NFL, it looks like, with no fans, at least at the beginning of the year. And let's just hope we have the games 
And, and then you also got to factor in, I, I don't know how you handicap this. You know, what if, what is the protocol? We have to look at this as de degenerate gamblers here to see what the protocol is for like Kansas city. What if, you know, God forbid Patrick Mahomes gets diagnosed on a Wednesday with the coronavirus before the chiefs are about to play the Broncos. Do they take, I assume they take the game off the board, but do you just put a couple of bucks if they don't take the game on the off the board on Denver or if they're a big underdog just because maybe somebody on the Chiefs will get diagnosed? I mean, these are all – it's just like getting hurt, right? Guys get hurt during the week. This is like an injury, obviously. Hopefully for most it won't be anything major. But, yeah, but so how, how do you think they, they actually recognize this too? So, you know, because with the NHL, if a guy gets hurt, we might see that it's a concussion. But if someone doesn't, they would list it as an upper body injury or they go lower body injury. So if a guy does get diagnosed with the coronavirus, do you think they actually identified as such? That's a great question. I, the, the liability, right? The liability yeah. is a big part of it. I, I know I always used to mock when the teams would say so-and-so is out for the Spurs because he has flu-like symptoms. You know, I, yeah. That was always code for he went out and partied too much the night before and he uh, couldn't get out of the hotel bed, and so he's got flu-like symptoms. But, yeah, I, mean, I think certain teams will do it more, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this all – all plays out and uh just as long as it actually happens you know i don't, I don't, I don't know what their protocol is going to be but i would think that they can isolate the players that have it just have them separated from the team and then we saw with the utah jazz the jazz were traveling around rudy gobert he had it and donovan mitchell but that was the only two guys on the team it wasn't like the whole entire organization the only two guys in the organization that had uh, the coronavirus were gobert and donovan mitchell so that is encouraging. I know some other teams have had more players, so we'll see. But we have some amazing factoids here for the NFL. Our guy Jimmy Shapiro has uh, hooked us up again with some amazing factoids about the 2020 NFL season and the good and the bad and the ugly, if you will, for the for the season. Because this is our official, unofficial Benny versus the Penny peekaboo at the. Is that a good word? Peek? I like. I think so. Why not? Uh, I I yeah. do. I, I was going to ask you if you would be more inclined to fall in love with Kansas City this year as the defending champs since, I mean, you didn't ride them throughout 2019, but you, you obviously did when it counted in postseason and especially in the Super Bowl when it was a, when it was a short line. So, um, yeah. you know, they're favored 14 times this year and twice they're an underdog. Yeah, I, I love Kansas City, but it's really going to depend on the point spread and how big they're favored and, I am someone that buys into the hocus pocus of uh, the winner's curse. The uh, Patriots have been able to avoid that over the years, but you know many of the other teams that have not. And so these guys have had their ass kissed, although not as much. I, I will tell you, it's, it's, it is odd because normally you go on the, they call it the rubber chicken circuit when you win the a championship and everyone just kisses your ass. They haven't been able to get that full experience because the Super Bowl was in February. Yeah. They had about a month and a half before the world shut down. So they had a month and a half for everyone to, uh, to kiss their ass. But the other, the other thing, like Kansas City's been a good team for the last couple of years with Andy Reid and, and with Alex Smith and all that. But it is so much different. You know, it's, it's that cliche about going from the hunter to the prey. Yeah. You know, and, it, and you're, you're, you're every – some teams circle Kansas City, but everyone's going to be circling Kansas City to make their statement that they're legit. So, um, so it really just depends on the point spread and obviously injuries and all that stuff. But uh, I, I, that would be one team I'm not afraid to to put some money on as a favorite, depending on how – we'll see how it goes once training camp opens, obviously. But but there's two things that you've always tried to, to shy away from. One of them was double-digit favorites. Oh, yeah, I hate – double-digit favorites is death. Yeah. Double-digit favorites is – if you look historically, I know I got I got completely screwed – I was bull. It was bull crap. What happened to me last year with those double digit, double digit favorites. But if you if you look at you know that's one of the beliefs I have. Right? You know, especially in division. Yeah. If you get if you get over a touchdown in a divisional game where teams are familiar with each other and all that, you gotta you just gotta close your eyes, as I like to say. You know, you close your eyes, you cover <laughs> your ears, and you you shut your mouth and you take the points and, and don't be, uh, don't be somebody that asks questions because if you, if you get over a touchdown and, and you get double digits in some of these games, you just got to be happy because there's, there's so many different ways you can win a bet. But if you're just betting the point spread, uh, then, then obviously guy get guy on the other team gets hurt. You can, that will, will de 
increase your chances of winning, right? If a guy gets hurt, and then also on the on the flip side, um, if your team just happens to play better that day, so there's a couple of ways you can win. If you if you bet the favorite, there's really only mainly one way you're going to win covering a big line, and that is everyone's playing well. So, but uh, yeah, I always like the big underdogs. As I said earlier, I try to find a way to to bet the underdogs. So. I- well, what are you going to do in the situation with Baltimore? Because it looks like Baltimore's favorite in all 16 games this upcoming season. Yeah, Baltimore's a, a curious team to me because they were so overwhelming. Teams could not figure out Lamar Jackson in the regular season. And it was like football malpractice watching these idiots try to tackle Lamar Jackson. He was like playing a different speed than everyone else, which was stunning considering how mediocre he had been when he briefly played the year before. He made me look like a complete schmuck uh, and, uh, and all that. So I, I'm going to assume the position that there are many defensive corners, especially in the division, you would think, the uh, the dum dums in Cleveland and the uh, the Steelers and the other teams in that division, the, even the Bengals, God forbid, have been working, uh, spending their time in quarantine trying to figure out how do we stop Lamar. And yet, in the playoffs, teams were able to to, to slow him down. I know he had a great statistical day against the Tennessee Titans, but the turnovers and, he, and a lot of that was in garbage time in the fourth quarter when the game was in control for Tennessee. So. Uh, I'm going to monitor that. I want to see how teams approach Lamar early. He's also a guy, although it's not the same because the offseason has been cut short, but that's the MVP, right? You're, you're very rarely the MVP back-to-back seasons, but it, it is hard just looking at what's gone on with the schedule and the Ravens play the NFC East team. So you're talking about Philadelphia, Dallas, Washington, the Giants. Those are None of those teams are all that good. And the Ravens are a good team. So, yeah, like uh, on first glance, you say, well, the Ravens should be favored in every game considering how they played last year. But much like Wall Street, right, we always give this disclaimer here that past results do not guarantee future outcomes, right? It's like when you buy stock or, or, or you invest in something, they always put that legal ease at the end. And just because the Ravens were good last year and Lamar Jackson was the MVP does not mean that's, that, that's going to carry over and spill over uh, to this – this particular year. Yeah. So I'm going I'm to have say, what two thirds of the NFL games at home. The home team is favored. So 166 times the home team is favored compared to just 28% for road teams. That, I mean, yeah, I think that's, that's just by the book, right? That's paint by numbers line making that the home team is home field advantage is worth like three points. Roughly, I guess they say if, if all the teams are both equal, you're going to favor the home team by three. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind betting road teams. I, I think you know because usually road teams are underdogs. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think thirty percent. That's about right on the opening line, and then they'll adjust that as developments warrant. Um, but the last couple of years, uh, you know, this, this obviously everything's different now, but it's, it's not like they're traveling by stagecoach and they're going to get the Spanish fever or something like that when they, I guess they get the coronavirus now, but I mean, it's yeah. still, it's, uh, you know, come on. I got to update my uh, pandemic. I, I used to go bubonic plague was my go-to pandemic and I guess I'll have to adjust with the times here. Yeah. No kidding. Right. That, that kind of goes with the, uh, that goes with your, your plagues and then you have your NFL book them. And so now you. That's right. Kinda- I haven't, I haven't done the bookum. I'm gonna have to do the bookum next week. I like to wait until a couple guys get arrested, so then I can piss off uh, the guys I work with because they get very upset when I pick the. I, I'm guaranteed to get some points. Now, do you do you count the guys that have been drafted but haven't been signed yet, though? Yeah, if you are drafted, we consider you part of the team. Okay. Yeah, we were even thinking about doing an alumni version of the. Uh, NFL book them for the hoodlums who used to play in the NFL. I mean, that guy in Jacksonville got arrested, the linebacker, uh, a couple weeks ago. So, yeah, Tevin uh, Smith. Yeah, Tevin Smith. So, yeah, so you, we can do like an alumni version, but I think we'll stick to – it's on my list to do next week. We'll do a whole big segment of, uh, of drafting teams, which is always a highlight. Yeah, I, boy. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I actually I, – I, I practice my handicapping, Gascon. I, this is great. The way I do the book, this is so, this is so wonderful because, like, Koopa Loop and uh, Roberto and Eddie, they, they do no research, uh, no opposition research. They just, you know, whatever, they show up, they pick teams. 
I spend like hours. I'm such a loser. I'll go through the arrest records. I'll go through historically trends on which teams get arrested more, which coaches have players generally that get arrested more. And uh, it has helped. I've won this thing a few times, the NFL book, which if you're, if you're not a, a big super fan, you happen to be stumbling on this. It is the fantasy football league where we pick teams and then you get points based on people being arrested. And uh, as we've been told, the, the way this will go, it will continue until somebody in the NFL commits murder again and gets caught. Then we'll have to finish the NFL book. But until then, I think we're okay. No, because I, I, I know you're not big into to list radio, and I know you're not big into schedule well, you radio. Are. No, you, you like Mount Rushmore. Who's on your Mount Rushmore? Over here, over here, over here, over here. I mean, you, got, you do your Mount Rushmore. So that was exactly what I was going to ask you, is that if you do have to close this thing out, would you end it with a Mount Rushmore of the NFL book em, from most horrific to the least horrific, or how would you actually put that up? Well, there's different categories. There's some – I, you always say that the Baltimore Ravens, it's in the DNA of the Ravens to have hoodlums on the team. So you put them on there. But if you go on like individual players, I, like Aaron Hernandez, although he did his crimes before we started the NFL book him. Uh, you know, that's like, that's like the creme de la creme there. Aaron Hernandez going around committing all kinds of horrific uh, crimes back in the day. And then, you know, it's the usual, the usual suspects. But there is advantages, much like gambling with teams that have the flu when they go to Miami or Vegas. You can also do that with visiting teams that go to Miami and go to – or players from those teams, rather. Not, not even the, the players that travel because the book comes to the offseason. Yeah. And uh, a lot of those guys will live in the cities that they play in, and they'll end up running amok like on South Beach if they play for the Dolphins. So it's hard to get in that much trouble if you play for the Green Bay Packers, although I doubt – Many of those guys live in Appleton or Green Bay. I'm assuming they fawn out across the country. Yeah. When you got money, though, you, you got all kinds of ways to get yourself into trouble. So we've seen that no matter what league it's in. Well, that it's, it's like a fly attracted to, to poop. You know, it's uh, people around there also know you have money and they try to try to entrap you sometimes. No doubt. Um, I'm a little surprised. I don't know if you are, but with the NFC South being as stacked as it is, Buccaneers are favored in 12 games and only three times they're dogs. Yeah, I saw that. I, this looks to me like a case where public perception is playing in. I think the, the odds makers know Tom Brady had that streak. He's the, the most, most consecutive games favored and since they've been keeping records for any quarterback. That's going to come to an end against the Saints. But I'm – I'm looking at that. I, I, I don't think the Buccaneers are going to be all that great this year. I think they'll score a fair amount of points. I'm not convinced on their defense. I, they have become a glamour team just because of Tom Brady. Uh, that, that could be a team right there if you're going to circle a team to keep an eye on, to be profitable. Uh, I, you look at win totals. This is a big time. You have win totals. Yeah. Who's going to win? Who's, uh, I always like to bet the under on those win totals. And Tampa Bay would be a good team to bet the under in on the win totals and you can make some cash on that. You would assume because Tom Brady, there's, you look at the three, three possible outcomes for a guy like Brady at his age, uh, 43 years old. You're like, you know, he would have to defy the space time continuum to, to play at an elite level. So you figure if Brady plays well, he's an average NFL quarterback. Well, Jameis Winston if you take away a few of those interceptions, he was an average NFL quarterback, although the numbers were obviously skewed because he kept turning the ball over. So you figure Brady's not going to throw as many interceptions. He's not going to fumble and all that stuff. Um, but the, the only way you get any real production out of Brady is you figure at his age, he's a middle of the pack, like a, like 14 to 18 in the NFL quarterback ranking. And that would be 14 would be the high end. The low end could be like 26 or something like that for Brady. Uh, even though I, I know him, he's the, the holy grail, Tom Brady, of quarterbacks and all that stuff. Uh, but then the other two options you have is Brady does not perform well. He plays up to the comps for players his age, and he continues to regress. He hasn't been good the last two years with the Patriots, and you assume he's not going to stand out from the crowd. And then the third option, if you're betting win total on Tampa, is you say, okay, uh, Brady gets hurt. That's what older players do. They get hurt, and you're like – all right, so if Brady gets hurt, let's take a look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers depth chart, and then and then you you want to puke when you look at the 
the backup options for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I'm, I'm going to bring it up right now. I got it in front of me here. Let me click on this here. Uh, I believe it's Colin Kaepernick's old buddy there, Blaine Gabbard, <laughs> is the backup quarterback. And then they've got someone named Ryan Griffin and Reed Sinnott is the currently the they drafted him in the seventh round he's also on the list so yeah so if you bet on the on the Buccaneers you get the cachet of them being a glamour team you seize that opportunity if you're you're into that kind of stuff and, and then you might end up needing Blaine Gabbard to play well godspeed if that's the case yeah so win totals for new uh for Tampa Bay anywhere from five to nine you get even money 10 to 14 wins it's 10 to 11 odds 15 to 16 wins, 75 to one odds, and then zero to four wins, 33 to four odds. You know, since we're in the sports cliche realm too, Ben, I think you'd agree with me on this. I've told you this several times, but for Bruce Arians and Bill Belichick, this is a, a perfect example of not letting a falling star fall on you. <laughs> Look at you. You, I like that you're quoting me. I feel, I feel wonderful here. I feel like I've, uh, I've arrived. Well, yeah, and there's that, uh, that other phrase that I, uh, I like to use from Wall Street. I, I, cha I, change, I change it up from, uh, from time to time, but it's like in Wall Street, don't try to catch a falling knife, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if a knife's falling off the table and you try to catch it, you're going to more likely than not touch the blade. You're going to, uh, your hand's going to be covered in blood and all. It's just going to be, going to be a disaster, but uh yeah, anyway, and then you look at Belichick. He's going to need to get some some miracle grow, grow, grow if you will, to uh, to get Jared Stidham, to get something out of Stidham. But I'm talking Belichick wants that. Belichick's like he he would love nothing more than for them to have more wins than the Patriots, and with Jared F. and Stidham as yeah. his quarterback, and he'll never admit to it. I know the, the Patriots have tweaked and they've t they've fiddled with the team a little bit, but it doesn't seem they've made any dramatic changes the tamper with the Patriots. They love that whole Patriot way and, and all that. They better be decent because they're on national television a bunch anyways, just from an entertainment standpoint. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if the Patriots, are, they go full suck for Lawrence, tank for Lawrence, and then they, they go like 4-12, and 12, which I just can't imagine a Belichick team at this point going 4-12. and 12. It seems yeah. a lot. Well, they have the, – the Vegas Lions out there, too, have Belichick as a 7-1 favorite to win Coach of the Year. So, you have him as Coach of the Year at 7-1, and then Joe Burrow as a Rookie of the Year favorite at 3-1. So Well, the, yeah, I mean, the key is that Belichick's got the blessing of low expectations now that Brady's gone, right? People are like, eh, it probably won't be that good. You know, it's, it's the chicken versus the egg argument. Is it – did Belichick become good because of Brady? Was Belichick becoming good and then Brady – you know, benefited from Belichick, so uh, we will we will feel we'll, we'll see what happens. But there's not a lot of expectation. Like the Buccaneers, we talked, just talked about the Bucks. The Bucks have high expectations, right? It's like the uh, the old line they said about poetry, or not poetry. It was a pottery. We talked about pottery and and you know high expectations and all that stuff. And you're you're gonna make the pottery, and then when you actually have to do it, it and what it actually looks like compared to what you thought it was gonna look like are two different things. You know, it's like, what the hell? Yeah. It's kind of like our perception of how we look on camera right now, right? It's a, it's a little bit different how we think I, and what we. Oh no, I, I don't even. I'm I, as I told you, Gascon. I do radio for a reason. I mean, look at this disgusting. Look at this. It's horrible. I haven't shaved. I got gray here. It's not a uh, good situation. But uh, at least I have a better background. I'm in the. I'm in my radio studio here, so I have. Uh, I have the nice background. They say with like the camera blend though is that your shirt is matching your background. That's like a big no no in the Hollywood world. Like west of the four oh five, that's kind of what I heard is is, is a big no no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well you you know about why don't you go run down on the Pacific Ocean, you schmuck. Why don't you go do that? I'm uh, I'm out here burning up where I live. It's a thousand degrees out here. Uh, that's so, Arizona, I've got Arizona my air conditioning pumping and uh I think the shirt's a good look. Is it look? It, it's like this. It's like my head's floating. See that? Like I'm floating here. La, 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 la. They say that's what they say for you TV people. You're floating heads or talking heads, right? I'm just a talking head. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Jaguars, 16 times this season, they're going to be underdogs. Are you surprised by that? No, because they're a ter they're they're not a glamour team. They have the smallest fan base in the NFL. So you got to factor in who's going to bet on them. It's mm -hmm. going to be the hardcore gambler. I actually like Gardner Minshew, but he was he was like a mediocre guy. He was, uh, and, and we'll, he's supposed to start. We'll see if they they bow down and to public pressure and go out and sign somebody like 
like Cam Newton. But no, Jacksonville's not going to go 0 and 16. Uh, they're not. Assuming they're trying, uh, Doug Marone, who's drowning right now as coach, and he, he's going to have to find a way to be competitive. And you know, they can. They, they're going to lose a lot of games and be crummy, but that doesn't mean they're going to not cover the point spread, right? They can. You can be underwhelming, and still be just good enough to lose, right? Just just play well for three quarters and then have a bunch of unforced errors in the fourth quarter and substandard play, and then you end up – you still lose the game, but you were competitive. I mean, it really comes down to that. I mean, you, you, if you have effort, you should be able to overcome being an underdog. And Hey, they'll use that as a badge of honor, right, a chip on their shoulder. Like, ah, nobody thought we could win and all that stuff, which if you buy into that mental – the mental gymnastics of the uh, the NFL is just, they actually have to work hard. That's yeah. the hard part. And the other work thing up. too is is you look usually with quarterbacks and wide receivers in contract years. I mean Leonard Fournette's not having his option picked up after the fifth year, so or his fifth year option being picked up. So, I mean, if you're looking at motivation for at least a guy like that who looked great a couple of years ago, I mean that's. That's exactly what he's fighting for is a brand new contract because he needs it. Wow. You assume he's fighting, though. Based on the reporting out of Jacksonville, he was falling asleep in meetings <laughs> and uh, he <laughs> appears to be obtuse to the whole situation here. So uh, we'll see if he does turn it on. But, but you look at the depth chart and they've got you know, DJ Chark, who actually is a pretty good receiver. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, who's OK. Somebody yeah. named Chris, uh, Chris Conley, who used to play for the Chiefs. Uh, Ke- Keelan Cole. I mean, these are not these are not great impact players, but that's who Gardner Minshew is going to throw the ball to. And if he gets hurt, you talk about injuries. Josh Tobbs, the former Steeler quarterback, is the uh, Joshua Tobbs is the backup to Gardner Minshew at this point, which means uh, that you might be getting a phone call, Gascon, to uh, go and sling the football and play quarterback in Jackson. Speaking of which, and I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I'm really excited about this. I think you'll agree with me on this, but I'm really excited. Um, odds to win anywhere from 10 to 14 games are, are pretty damn good. Five to two odds for the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, with Alligator Arms Murray there. The, the rookie the, of the year in 2019, Kyler Murray. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually the first time. I'm glad you brought that up because it's, it's the first time ever a garden gnome has uh, has been able to win. I mean, usually uh, you you look at that, the diminutive t- size player does not win. He actually fell apart at the end of last year. I know you you don't want me to bring this up, but Kyler Murray the last five weeks of the season was not. I think it was a uh, four or five weeks. Uh, I forget. He was really bad. Teams figured out Kyler Murray. He and he is because of his diminutive size. It would appear he is limited. Uh, so, and, and uh, some of those numbers he got, remember that Lions game when the Lions just gagged early in, the, I think it was, might've been week one. Yeah. And they, they ended up in a tie. And that was mainly because the Lions just stopped playing. They let Mighty Mouse uh, in garbage. He was Mighty Mouse in garbage time. And, and the first part of that game was the Oompa Loompa. So. Well, it certainly does help that you get DeAndre Hopkins in the town and you get rid of David Johnson, who has been injury prone. And Kenyon Drake came to town. He was good last season for them. So, I mean, yeah, they're, t- still, they're, they're still playing in the division. I got the Rams, the 49ers. The Rams will be average. The 49ers will be good. The Seahawks will be good again. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not excited for the Cardinals. I know you're a big Cardinal fan. I'm going to buy you an Arizona Cardinals hat. And oh. I'll, buy you, I'll buy you a Kyler Murray jersey, but unfortunately – uh, they only come in kid sizes, so I don't well, know. Yeah. That is the that's the best quarterback out of Oklahoma the last couple of years, and we could find out something about Carson Wentz's back at this season if they uh, if he gets injured like he has in years past. But I, I mean, that's the one division I'd be scared to touch the NFC East. I mean, because you look at it, you mentioned earlier the schedule of some teams, the Giants and the Redskins combined, they're underdogs in twenty five games. Well, yeah, it's not that hard a division. It's either Philadelphia or Dallas. Like yeah. the Giants, Giants blow. The Redskins suck. So you know, unless something amazing happens and they have some kind of metamorphosis, you've got you've got patches of the clown out there playing 
uh, playing quarterback for these teams. I mean, you got a bunch of dunderheads in the coaching staff and uh, and whatnot. So, what's our our old buddy Lenny Dykes? Just remember Sprinkles the Clown. I got <laughs> yeah. I got to use Sprinkles the Clown. I got to update my clown uh, references. How many other clowns? You, you know, Ronald McDonald, uh, Krusty the Clown, Krusty the Clown, yeah, uh, Bozo the Clown, very famous clown, Bozo the Clown. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, no, it's it's either Philadelphia or, or Dallas. The the Cowboys are the more talented team. I don't really trust. Dak Prescott, he's when the when the Cowboys play better teams. I got to look at the schedule. But when they play better teams, he does not generally play all that well. That's been the the case in his career. The one thing I was going to ask you too, just because I I know you mentioned like the things you shy away from double digit favorites and divisional double digit favorites. How do you feel about backing rookie quarterbacks or even first year quarterbacks that have the starting nod? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not against, I normally, it takes time for people to get their legs underneath them and all that. So I'm, I'm of the position that I like to hold off the first couple of weeks. It, Cause I, I know when I've started a new job, uh, I usually have sucked the first couple of like shows when I worked <laughs> at other places. And so, so I assume the same thing happens to these guys. Uh, I know last year, if you look at like you mentioned Kyler Murray, he, he did not particularly play great early in the season. Yeah. The middle party played uh surprisingly well and then he fell off at the end of of last year but i don't have like this stigma against the the rookie quarterback but i do like to wait and get and see what i'm what i'm dealing with to see if these guys have the flop sweat and the stage fright and they're just overwhelmed by the uh, by the speed of the game it usually doesn't happen that often i mean yeah because i'm just thinking about it like when you talk about a pitcher in major league baseball a guy that starts off the season roaring hot I mean, you think about it, like Alex Wood a few years ago for the Dodgers, who was blistering to open up the season. And then I don't want to say he tapered off, but he did cool off in the second half. But that's when guys had a book on him, especially in the National League West. So I'm kind of curious, like the approach with a rookie quarter, like Joe Burrow is going to be the starter in Cincinnati week number one. Yeah. So that division yeah. is no, no cakewalk. But Cleveland should be better this year. Obviously, Baltimore. And then who knows what's going to happen with Pittsburgh and Big Ben. Yeah, listen, I love – I'm a big fan of Joe Burrow. I love them at LSU. Uh, the Bengals are going to be dog crap is what – I mean, uh, they're going to be fertilizer again and all that. But that doesn't mean Burrow can't find success. We've seen this is this misconception that you can't put up numbers on a bad team. and yeah. You can actually put up more numbers on a bad team because you never stop trying to score, right? You never tra- stop trying to score and all that. Um, so I, it's going to be an interesting uh, case study because there's a guy that's the claim to fame for Joe Burrow at LSU is he's so accurate and does that carry over? Cause if you're accurate, that's the most important skill for a quarterback. It's just accuracy. It's not, it's decision-making and accuracy. Cause if you get to the NFL, you can make all the throws. Some guys can make more plays, you know, all the, speaking of cliches here, but it, as long as you're accurate, that's why I, I don't, I wouldn't bet against Gardner Minshew being a decent NFL quarterback because he's accurate. And it's like that, that old line uh, that it was a uh, Mike Leach, I think that had the line back in the day that you know, the most important things are accuracy and decision-making and quick feet. It's not how fast you are per se. That doesn't hurt, but it's, you don't have to be the fastest guy in the world. Um, you know, you don't have to have the strongest arm in the world. Those are misconceptions. And those guys always get drafted high every year because the scouts get orgasmic when they see those guys. But Burrow, he has a strong arm, but he's accurate. So I, I like him, I, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch the win total of the Bengals uh, because it's, it's so low, right? Cincinnati is one of the lower, lower teams on the list based on what they did last year. I, I, that would be one I might consider betting the over, but I would, I would stay away. I would abstain is the word. That's a big word, abstain. I would abstain. I don't abstain from food very often. <laughs> well, it's, uh, well, it's fine. I mean, you're in the middle, I'm sure, of, a, of another fast that's going to be anywhere between 16 and 18 hours. And I, I, I am, but uh, actually it started yet. It's been about 24 hours right now, so I'm – as soon as I get done, if you'll you'll free me from my handcuffs here, I will be running off to uh, to Fat Sal's to uh, get a gigantic sandwich, and then because I am honoring the quarantine, I will eat it in my car. So uh, that's that's my idea of a fine meal: eating a delicious 10, 10 out of ten sandwich in my automobile. 
The now, Ballard woman. Are, are you going to do it with, uh, like, the woman? I, I think, I don't know if you saw her, but she was, a woman went into a liquor store the other day, and she had a mask on, but she cut a hole where her nose and mouth is. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. Are you going to eat fat salads with a hole in your yeah. mask? You know what I, I love? I actually have my mask here because I, you know, I'm near you. So I like when I go to the store, you know, like this is how you're supposed to wear the mask like this. And then the, the guys wear it where it just covers their mouth. And so their nose is not covered. It's like, doesn't that, what's the point? Just not, don't wear a mask. Like, just, yeah. you know, be a rebel, be a maverick. Don't wear the mask. And then I saw one guy, God love him. And, it, you know, he's a, a dad and he had his, it looked like his daughter's, it had all the pink nursery stuff written on the mask. Like it was for a baby. Oh, and yeah. it didn't, it didn't fit his head and he was wearing it. And I was like, wow, man, you know, just, <laughs> just pull your shirt up like this. Maybe you can do that. You know? Back. Yeah. Well, See, at least you don't have to do that inside the mansion. So, um, you know, no, you would be able no, to identify is... if you were on radio with a mask on. So, no, we we power wash this thing once a week. We clean this bad boy up over here. And you got, uh, I mean, you're like air traffic control too with the the walkie talkie and the headphone microphone. So, yeah, well, that's my next job. Well, I'm going to be a telemarketer. So, when this <laughs> thing, no, seriously, yeah, one eight hundred junk or something like that. Yeah. Oh, keep the G rated. Um, is there anything else that you th like jumped out to you with the schedule being released on Thursday? Um, no, I mean, we already knew the matchups. I, you look for you know, certain quirks in the schedule. I think the Chiefs have four consecutive road games. You look at stuff like that, and you yeah. say, you know, by the end of that, are they still going to be good? But I, if you're a really good team, it shouldn't matter that much. Um, and, you know, I usually look more towards the bad teams to see if there's any value there. We talked about most of the bad teams already. We know who the bad teams are. And then you take a look at, like, the Giants are favored in one. They're underdogs in 12, and they're pick them yeah. in three. And you're like, is there a chance I can get some value that Daniel Jones actually gets better and the Giants can, can compete here? Is that a team, you know, you want to look at and see how they do? assuming we have training camp and all that. Uh, so that's one, but you know, there's a lot of teams that are right in the middle. I mean, and, and you know, what do you do with like the, the Rams teams that are, it could go either way, right? They're on the fence. Could it could be good. It could blow, you know, you gotta, you gotta see how this goes. So uh, we got plenty of time though. And it, it's at least training camp opens. It's supposed to open in July, yeah. if not maybe August. And then the season hopefully in, in September, so we have plenty of time to dissect them. This is just a first look, Gascon, and I, I'm glad we have stuck to the timeline here that we had talked about. I'm glad that we have done that, so we don't want to go too long here. I didn't realize we were doing a full retrospective on yeah. the NFL schedule. Yeah, it was, uh, it's your day off, but uh, you were summoned. You, uh, you did your jury duty for the day, and uh, now right. you're free to roam about the country. There you go. All right. So I, I've been released here. All right. Let's have a great weekend and uh, good luck. Good luck when we eventually all get together and bet a very communal thing, gambling on football.